Welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, the host city of NAB 2014. We're here on the 45th floor of the Trump International Hotel. This is Cinema 5D on the couch. Presented by b and the professional's source. Vitech Videocom, Tools on Air, and Zeiss. Welcome to episode 5 of Cinema 5D on the couch. Today we have one of our sponsors here, Vitek Videocom. A lot of people. And um, welcome Steve, Ali, Barbara, product managers for um, O'Connor, Light Panels and uh, Sachtler. Yep. Then we have Andrew, who is market manager of Vitek Videocom. And John, who is uh, field support for Anton Bauer. Thank you. Hi, Nina. Hi. There are a lot of new products from uh, different Vitek brands. Uh, should we just start with a little overview of where Vitek is currently in the market, where you see yourself and where everything looks to be moving? Uh, sure. So <coughs> the origins of Vitek are in broadcasting. Um, Vinton's the founding brand of the group. And then over the years, we've been joined by Sackler, O'Connor, Anton Bauer, loads of big names from across acquisition. Uh, all kinds of different tools in the acquisition space. But predominantly they've been at the, the high end of the professional spectrum. What we're looking at now is diversifying and making those tools more accessible to people probably earlier on in their career. And my role is to really understand what those people want and need and, and their business practices and to make sure that you know, we're producing products that are accessible and, and, and in conjunction with these guys, making sure we get that right. Cool. So. I, th I saw your stand looks a lot different this year, so I think it's it's broken up into different categories rather than brands, so it's more like application based, right? That's absolutely right. So we've split up our, our stand by application and we actually are, to some extent, splitting up our business by application as well, which is where my role comes in. So um, my, my role in the business is to look at the applications of uh, pro videography and cinematography, and whereas these guys will be at the show telling people stuff about the products, I want people in the community telling me about their work so that we can get that understanding into the business. Cool. So let's start with a few of the new products. Um, let's start with Sachtla because I was involved a little bit with the, <laughs> I gave you feedback and stuff for yeah. new products. What is new from Sachtla? Well, we brought two new products here. I start with the smaller one, which is a tie down basically, but it's not just a tie down. It's the nice thing. It's called speed level clamp. And as the name tells you, it helps you to do the leveling faster because when you move around the location, you have to do leveling quite often. And it's quite, you know, you do not really enjoy doing it. The speed level uh, clamp works really easy. You attach it to the head as a standard tie down. You press it, level the head, you let it go and it's done. It's so easy and so fast. That's why it's a speed level clamp. And it's an optional accessory or will it be shipped with tripods in the future? It's an optional accessory and it works with all uh, Sachtler heads with a 100 mil ball. Current range, also the, all the historic old heads, as long as it's a Sachtler 100 mil. So you just press it, level, let, yeah. it go, let go and that's it? So you attach it, press, level, go, done. Cool. Yeah. So what else is new? The, um, the other new stuff is we, ex we launched last year Ace, the, the Ace Fluid heads, the tripods, and this year we extended the range to the Ace accessories. They are basically a base plate, matte box and a follow focus, so it's a complete kit. So there are three new Ace accessories. Uh, what about the base plate? The, the base plate is really easy to use, it just works as a Sachtler head. You just release the, the camera platform, you take it off, you could go directly on a Sachtler tripod or back. Also the height adjustment is really simple. On the other side you have the knob here, you just open it and then you can adjust it your, depending on... Sorry. <laughs> You can adjust the height depending on the lens you have. Then if you look at the, the mat box, if you want to um, the rotating stage here, it's easy. It's just led by friction, so you don't have to do any screw adjustment. If you want to take the filter out, you press the button here. You just take it out. Again, also flex, the same thing. You release them. take them out and keep them on again, I'm done. Cool. So there are different rings for different lens diameters or? If you buy the matte box to get two new rings as, rings as well, with two different sizes to fit to, to your lens. And you can just cut? Yeah, if you haven't got, if it doesn't fit your lens, then you just cut a larger hole. Mm -hmm. 
that's the, um, the rod bridge. If you want to go higher, you can detach it and you just turn it round and then you go to like a C300 tight if you need to. So you just, with an Allen key, you take it yeah, off, yeah. The two screws, turn it around, turn it, put it back put on. It back and then okay. you're higher. The follow focus comes as a friction wheel and a gear drive and there, if you want to have them on the other side, it's very easy. You just detach them, take them off and put them on the other side so it's very flexible. If you want to change the drive direction, you open the screw here, turn the complete gearbox and then again, done. And the hard stops the same thing, you just have the push buttons here and you adjust them. For me, this is an essential feature to have hard stops because a lot of the users of, you know, like Ace Tripod are t typical DSLR users who use stills lenses and most of them, as e everybody knows who does video on them, uh, they don't have hard yeah. stops. So you, if you, even if you attach a normal follow focus, like a traditional cine follow focus, which is used with cine lenses, uh, you will have a hard time because they just turn over you. So er, all your marks are gone every time you turn it. Yeah. So I think it's very essential to have it. I think a nice feature is, I, because I, I, I tested the prototype, you sent me one, uh, is that you can actually just switch the, the hard stops on and off with the yeah. thing here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So you basically, so you're off, uh, it's you're free then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you're engaged again. Cool. And the, the, the white ring uh, is replaceable? Yeah, you can take it off again. You get two yeah. when you buy them. It is an extremely versatile follow focus. I mean, out of these three, this is my favorite new product, I have to say. I am, and like I can see a lot of DSLR users would be very interested in this because uh, it's a market where there are a lot of products, but yeah. like follow focuses, but usually you have one or two features that are missing, which are essential yeah. for. And the weird thing is, I mean, uh, the more, you know, if you use a DSLR, you need a more complex product to actually make it work with photo lenses. But on the other hand, you know, it's, it's always a price issue because yeah. you need, the, you know, so far a more expensive one. I think the price of this one is very interesting for a lot of people. So I'm looking forward to using this. So for the ACE Follow Focus, you were building on the internal Vitek uh, knowledge that was there from, you know, O'Connor Follow Focuses, yeah. for example? Exactly, yeah. Okay, cool. So what's the, but the price point, I, I'm sure, is, will be within, you know, what we are used to with the ACE range now. How, how much will yeah, these accessories cost? Uh, if you buy the whole kit, it's $1,500. Uh, the matte box is 550, the um, base plate is 325 and the follow focus 735 if you buy them individually. Okay, and when will they be available? They will be available in, sh in May. Cool. So we just talked about O'Connor. What, what's new from O'Connor this year? Well, um, O'Connor, obviously, we're, we're not at that price point. You know, our, our customers are traditionally um, guys, that, you know, they, they may have started DSLR, but they're definitely on C300, maybe he's thinking trading up F55 or that kind of camera. And it's, it's, we're traditionally a rental proposition, as you know, you know, the, the um, O'Connor 1030 pan and tilted, for example, which is our entry level product, it, it will balance, you know, a GoPro or a, you know, I want to I want to see the GoPro on this. Yeah, well you can put a, it, it 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 balances down to zero. You see, because I mean traditionally you the rent in the rental market you don't know what cameras the guys are going to have when they come in to rent the stuff and what lenses are going to be using what filters. So we we have to have very rangy products. Also, cinema, we we only really target cinematography, and you know, um, it, it's not like you're just documenting something and then broadcasting it later. You know, you've got a story and. So it tends to be more creative, and so you, the, the product has to be slightly more versatile. Um, so, you know, we've got the 1030 and um, with the 30L tripod, that's our entry level head. And we've got a range of camera accessories too, the O box, the O focus, the um, O grips, and, um, and the CFF1, which is our sort of um, high level follow focus. Um, and what we're trying to do is we want a, a, a proposition with O'Connor that's the same as the heads, really. So. Um, an O'Connor 1030D, it doesn't really care what camera you've got above it, as long as it's less than 30 pounds and more than zero pounds, okay? And I really want the accessories to be the same. I mean, the kind of ACs we're working with, you know, um, they can't say, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an AC, but I only work on this type of lens, or I will only work on 50 mil lightweight support. And so, for example, on our CFF1 kit that we do, and we've, we include everything in a storm case because people can't buy a case to carry it in anywhere with custom cut forms. 
it'll work on 15mm studio, 15mm, um, 90mm studio, 15mm lightweight. You get a full set of all the gears for all of the different types of lenses you can use. You get a friction driver for... So you, as an AC, you are set if you buy this kit. You don't yeah, it's, need a, to it's a one-stop shop. It's, it's got yeah. a crank in there, it's got a whip, and uniquely the whip has got a male, all the elements of the, the whip have a male and a female connection on each end, so you can daisy chain them, so you can make a very long whip. And for example, you can you can make a whip, and the whip has an isolator handle, so you can get real um, uh, precise control on the focus wheel. And then you can daisy chain the speed crank in the end of the whip, so you can do a remote ah, speed see. crank, that kind yeah. of thing. Um, so yeah, we've and we've also put the sort of um, the. I mean, the 1030, we've really designed all the accessories that go with the 1030 around the um, LWS standard. So the all focus, the all grips, the base plate we do, they're all based around the LWS standard. Um, the CFF1 is um, a high level product aimed at you know, the top end, and that's, that's also studio. We do have studio adapters for things like the um, all grips, but in, in general, it's LWS for the 1030. So. We've got this kind of unique package around the whole LWS standard and payloads less than kind of 30, 30 pounds. Cool. So, yeah. So you see the market changing as well? I mean, uh, you know, the, your customer base, the customer base is obviously changing with more cameras and more camera. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Range. We're here at the show. I mean, JVC brought out a new camera, the Elise, the, the um, AJ brought out a new camera. Um, yeah. Panasonic. Um, everyone. Let's just say who didn't. I think we're faster. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely <laughs> right. I mean, and, and you know, Black Magic as well. You know, and so you've got 4K sensors, global shutter. There's this real sort of trend I feel towards sort of cine style shooting, um, PL mount, um, being flexible with the lenses, and you've got every kind of flavour. You've got every flavour at every kind of price point, but they're all kind of in that real hot spot for the 1030, and so you know we've got a lot of interest in that product. Because it is really a future-proofing product, and you, and you know the, they're a product that completely hold their price. And you know you look on eBay for all kind of heads. You, yeah. you you don't get a lot of change out of a five thousand dollars for any kind of product. You know yeah. it's a it's a, it's a good proposition. You know it's a it's a it's a good investment. You know. Cool, Ali, you're hiding back there. <laughs> but what's new from Light Panels? Well, we <coughs> we introduced uh, our nine-inch Fresnel at the show. As you know, we have a 4-inch Fresnel, 6-inch Fresnel, and we introduced the Solar Inca 12, our 12-inch Fresnel, and we had a hole in the lineup, the 9-inch Fresnel, and now we have the largest lineup of LED Fresnels. Anybody out there? We're still the only people that make uh, LED Fresnels that have DMX control, not only of the intensity, but also of the focus. And um, the Solar Inca 9 are kind of like an equivalent to a traditional 1K tungsten. And we did that on purpose. So if you're used to going to a 2K for now, you go to the Solar 12. If you're looking for a 1K for now, you go to the Solar 9 and so on. So um, we, we also introduced the Helio D12 and T12. That's a high output panel. It's very interesting. It's made out of... 12 LED packages that all have a custom reflector in them, or on them, I should say, but no lensing. So the light output is very similar to that of a PAR. It's very raw, it's, it's, it's hard, it's, it's a tight beam, and it's bright. It's really bright. Um, and just like any decent PAR should have a lens kit, we made a lens kit, but we don't have a heavy case. We have a, a little bag, and instead of glass lenses, we use nanoptic lenses. They are uh, three mil polycarbonate f f uh, lenses that have a nano texture imprinted on them that actually bend the light just like a lens would, a glass lens would bend the light. And between the fixture and the light output and this lens kit, you have a really versatile fixture. Um, we kind of try to make it very, um, very familiar to somebody who uses PAR. So, the, the power supply is on the back of the unit, but you can take it off and we have an optional extension cable so you can put the ballast on the ground because we have a very nice custom balance, uh, uh, power supply designed for us. Um, we have a, an optional foot for it, so you just slide the power supply into that and you can set it in the dirt or something. And we also put a little uh, half inch hole into that foot, so if you want to hang it, you just put a pipe clamp onto that stand slash bracket and then you can hang it next to your fixture. 
it's really cool, it's really ver versatile, and it's a great companion to the Solo Inca 12. And the D12 is a daylight 12 uh, LED package fixture, and the T12 is a tungsten balanced fixture. Um, and uh, they're great companions, you know, highlight up, but you can use them in studios, you'll be able to use them on location, um, cinematography style shooting, um, with interest from ENG shoot shooters. And um, all those fixtures have DMX control, uh, and with really small DMX boards that are out there now, DMX control can go into places where it previously wasn't, and it'll allow the, the, the shooters or the crews to save time and just change intensity. You don't have to reach up, you don't have to get a ladder, things like that. And especially on the finales, you know, we have the built-in focus control. It came in very handy when they were shooting the red carpet scene for the Oscars again this okay. year. Yeah. So, um, but that's not the only news we have at the show. Um, we, we introduced these one-by-one -one tra LS Traveler kits. Um, they're hard cases that have one-by-ones in them. Um, two, like a, a spot in a flood, and then we have a trio that has two floods in a spot, and then we have a trio plus which has two bicolors in a flood. And always, uh, they always come in a trolley-style hard case with custom foam stands, uh, the lighting fixtures and then extra cavities for optional accessories like um, gel sets, uh, battery brackets. And um, the one by one, you know, the original one by one, which is the light panels one by one, was introduced at NAB. And we wanted to celebrate that anniversary this year with a promotion. And we lowered the prices of all one by one products by up to 45%. Wow. And it's a limited time op uh, uh, promotion up until early June, so um, everybody get out there and get your one-by-ones because uh, at 45 off, that's a real steal. Yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah. Where do you see uh, LED lights, I mean, in the future? I think they are going anywhere. I mean, in the beginning it started, as you said, with the one-by-ones, yeah. um, and now with all the solars and the incas, you have like, you know, Fresnel lenses, which we were used to because everybody was, in the beginning, hoping for you know, to replace these really hot lights. So, for example, in here we use the solars as well. Yeah. It's quite warm still, but and we that have is to turn the air conditioner off for the yes, microphones. Yes, for the right? microphones. But it's because we are a lot of people. Imagine we would have normal, oh, you know, yeah. traditional lights impossible. in here. It would be it's not practical. It's not feasible. Yeah. Right. Well, where do you see them? I mean, uh, there are still like really big units. Uh, you know, you, the, the power output is still not there yet, but they, uh, you know, every year you see more and more powerful LEDs. Do you think LEDs will replace traditional lights at some point completely? A absolutely, absolutely. It's, it's a very clear trend and, 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 and it's not just in our industry, it's, it's across life, you know. Um, that's the technology that right now is giving you the most light for power in and the least amount of waste in terms of heat. Um, and that will continue. When we introduced the Solar 12 last year, we were pushing not only LED technology for our industry, but we were pushing LED technology, period. Um, and we're very proud of that. And we continue to do advanced R&D in, in those fields and in those areas um, to be able to provide cutting edge product for our friends and customers and colleagues. And, um, and, and we continue to work on that. So um, we've, we've spent in the last couple of years a lot of time making large, large uh, uh, high output fixtures for studios. And um, Light Panel started on location and on set. And we spent some time on, on, on in the studios now. And I think uh, in the coming months you'll see more, more fixtures that can be used in the studio, but also we'll pay a little more attention to the location market. So anybody who travels a lot with their cameras and goes from setup to setup, I think we'll have some really cool stuff coming for them in the very, very near future. So you're teasing, but you're not telling. I, I can't tell, <laughs> I can't tell. I'd love to, but um, uh, let me say it this way. I'm really, really excited about what we're working on behind closed doors in our lab. And, um, and I'm very, very sure that many other people like yourself will be really excited once we start um, letting information get out. Yeah, let's see. Cinegear, maybe? Cinegear would be, I think, a very, very good place to be this year. <laughs> cool. So, John, uh, yes. Anton Bauer, we have some new stuff there as well. And I think you redesigned a lot of products. Anton Bauer has 
introduced a totally redesigned battery lineup and charger lineup this year, um, more ergonomically uh, for the feeling and, and supporting of the batteries. We also have, sorry, we have also introduced a uh, pr more protection for the cell packs inside. Inside we have uh, one of the problems with cells and the smaller batteries. As, during use you end up with generation of heat and heat in a confined area can actually degrade the quality of the cells and the longevity of them. We have redesigned the battery with a heat dissipation channel internal so it takes the heat away from the cells and, help, and helps secure uh, keeping them cooler. We also have inside the battery we have all the cells are in individual channels inside a, ma a protective matrix to protect each cell from dropping and damage. Therefore, you won't see broken weld tabs or the potential for any damage. Uh, it's all in, designed in for the protection. We've also incorporated a power tap for the first time, brand new into the battery, um, and it will be able to. Um, You'll be able to use that for, for full output of the battery. The full output on the battery is 10 amp load, so you'll be able to use it in addition to powering a camera. So if you have accessories that you'd like to go along with, we, you can accommodate that at the same time. We've also, um, as part of the redesign, we've also redesigned the display. No longer do you have to worry about what type of bar, what, what the bars mean not for capacity. We've gone digital. You actually will see the battery in percentage. You'll see the capacity of the battery, how much is remaining in percentage, and when it's sitting on in function on a camera, you will see the remaining time available to the battery in usage in hours and minutes on a countdown basis. So five hours and 19, five hours 18. It, it'll be very accurate, and you'll be able to rely upon that um, accuracy on the batteries. This version here replaces the Dionic 90. Still 90 watt hour battery. It's the, it's the uh, uh, battery that you can take on an airline and carry as many as you wish without uh, IATA rules and restrictions. But once again, all lithium ion has to go carry on, not go into cargo. So this is the, uh, actually the digital 90 battery, which replaces the Dionic 90. Uh, and um, what we've done, we've, in addition to the protection and the display and uh, We've also incorporated a rubberized grip to help hold the battery better. And uh, we've actually lowered the prices. The previous retail on Dynac 90, as it was known, was 430. The new retail on the digital, on the Dynac 90, down to the digital 90, is 374, or 379, I'm sorry. So you have 379 on the battery. And then um, the next scale up on the battery is the uh, digital 150. Uh, the digital 150 is 150 watt hour. It replaces the Dionic HCX. The Dionic HCX was 120 watt hour, weighed two and a half pounds, and had a retail price of 630. The new digital 150 is two and a half pounds still. Um, it's 150 watt hour and we've lowered the price by $100 US, so it now becomes a list price of 530. The digital 150 is the highest capacity battery that you can safely take on an airplane. The IAT restrictions are 160 watt hour. Uh, nominal on this battery is 156, so it falls nicely right below there. With the 150, you can only take a maximum of three batteries on plane, one on the equipment, two spares, but that is per person. So if you're traveling with other people, they can also carry two, two extra batteries per person or additional attached onto the camera. Our, our final battery we worked with is the Dionic, uh, replaces the Dionic 160. It, uh, then it was also known as the Dionic HD. We've replaced it, uh, we've gone to the, uh, or the Proform, I'm sorry, the, um, digital 190 now. It's called the digital 190. And the previous Dionic 160 was three pounds, had 160 watt hour, and had a list price of $1,100. The new Dionic replacement, which is the digital 190, is still three pounds. It's 190 watt hour, but the new retail is 650. 
So, so it's great, a tremendous almost half price. Uh, definitely. Um, and the thing about the digital 190 is that it cannot see the inside of an airplane because of the restrictions. It cannot, it cannot travel at all. Yeah. We've also, in addition to the redesign and the batteries, we've color coded them. So the green is for Dianic 90s or the digital 90s. The blue is for digital 150s and the gray would be for the digital 190 battery. We've also redesigned the chargers. We have two brand new chargers we're introducing. They're performance series chargers. Um, I'll compare the charger we have here to our tried and true quad 2702 charger that's been out there since 1996. The quad 2702 charger was a sequential charger. It only charged one battery at a time. Um, it charged fast and, as, and it sought out which battery, if you put four batteries on a charger, it sought out which battery it can top off first. It also had the capability of acting as a power supply. You flip a switch on the back and it became an all or nothing. It, it acted as a power supply or it acted as a charger. It did it very well for many years. Our new introduction with the performance series, the quad charger, will charge all four batteries at the same time. It too has the capability of seeking out which battery you can top off first. So while it's charging the other three batteries, it's putting a little more extra power into the battery that it can get off first for you. It also has the capability of not only acting as a charger, but it will also act as a power supply, 70 watt power supply at the same time. So it's very versatile. It gives you the capability of serving many needs at, at one time. So you can power a camera and charge your batteries, top batteries off at the same time. The Quad 2702 had a list price of $1,695. The new performance uh, quad charger has a list price of $1,300. Uh, we've also incorporated um, the features into a two position charger, uh, the performance dual that charger um, does not have uh, other ca the capabilities of acting as a, doesn't have a tester built in, but it does have the same power supply capability and dual simultaneous charging capabilities. That list price uh, is comparable to the dual 2722 that we had. Um, the new list, that list price on the dual 2722 was 1395. The new price on the performance dual is 900. The chargers also have a touchscreen LCD display on each on each side on the side of the charger that will allow you to see the status of the each battery position being charged. Uh, it will show you red if it's practically dead and as it's charging the level will change <coughs> to yellow and when it reaches green you're re you've reached at least 80% and you'll be able to hit the touch the uh, touch screen and see how, how high your battery is in capacity to, uh, for charging and status. The charger also can act as um, a tester, the quad charger can. And in as a tester, you can, like with the quad 2702, you can analyze your batteries and run a test on them and help maintain the accuracy of the fuel gauge and see how your batteries are holding up over time. We've also incorporated for uh, rental houses and TV networks, we've incorporated Wi-Fi into the charger. Now Wi-Fi will, in, with, it, with our new battery management software that we're coming out with, will enable the rental house manager or the uh, chief photographer or the chief engineer at a TV station to see each individual charger of this dial and you'll be able to see the batteries on the chargers and see how they're holding up. You'll be able to also run tests on them uh, and be able to, to main, help better maintain his fleet, their fleet of batteries, even with the rental houses. So that's with the Wi-Fi capability. And uh, then uh, with the battery management software, the, speaking with the engineer yesterday, we just uh, came up with the idea of being able to relabel the names inside the batteries themselves and so that way we can identify if you have a rental house code you can rent a, name, name the rental house or if you're in the studio uh, TV TV studio 
you'll be able to put the photographer's name inside the memory of the battery to help better identification of the batteries and prevent loss. Cool. Have them keep them from walking. Who would have thought there's so much innovation in batteries? It's <laughs> everything redesigned. Every, every time we, we Anton Bauer has been in business for 44 years, and we've been evolving ever since. And uh, it's been yeah. a, it, it's uh, this is a really exciting time. I mean, for us cameramen, this is a low interest product in a sense that we expect it to work, but we right. never think about you know wh why does it work? It should it just has to. It's so it's nice to have new you know I, I wouldn't even think about innovating in batteries, but there is obviously a lot of potential. There is there there is potential, and it's something that you're right. It is the last thing you think about, but the one you one of the things you rely the most upon. Yeah. And yeah. the first thing that you, you know, if Blame it fails, something goes wrong. <laughs> it's a big problem. Yeah. You can't work with, you know, if some other piece of equipment doesn't work, you might be able to film, but without the battery, you're kind of stuck. Very true. Yeah. Very true. So in Europe, V-mount is very widespread. Uh, so I heard there will be Sachtler branded batteries with a V-mount. There are. Um, the, the, we've, uh, Anton Bauer has addressed the Sachtler uh, or the uh, V-mount need. And uh, we have produced under the same lineup of batteries uh, with the same 90, the 150, and the 190. We have addressed it with, instead of having a gold mount, we put a V mount on the back, and it's under the Sockler brand. Um, so those that are Sony users, both in US and in Europe, will be able to get the Anton Bauer quality without having to uh, worry about changing over their back plates or changing their systems. The batteries will charge on any V-mount charger and V-mount batteries will be able to charge on our chargers. And there's also, there is also identical to the quad charger, there is a V-mount quad and identical to the two position charger, there's also a dual. Very nice. Thank you all. There's a lot of innovation from the Vitek group. I think we have to wrap it up. Um, thanks also to our other sponsors. Uh, that's B&H, who supplied all the equipment we use here. Also, a lot of it is Vitek group equipment, which is nice. And um, also thank you to Zeiss and Tools on Air. And see you in episode six of On the Couch. Thank you. <laughs>